Father, we bless your name. Thank you for this worship experience. We ask that you speak in this place afresh. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be accepted in your sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In your name I pray. Amen. In just a few minutes, I want to raise this passage of scripture from Matthew 28. It's a part of the meditation I gave earlier this morning in the pre-dawn hours. That meditation is from Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. I won't read it all, but let me just pick up this meditation. I'm going to pick it up at verse 5. But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And so quickly, go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. Hallelujah. And Jesus, and as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. I want to stop right there. Let me just talk for the next few moments about Easter hope in a Good Friday world. I know I don't have much time. I know it's Easter Sunday. I know I don't have much time. So let me let me work Easter hope in a good Friday world. You know, the reality is the joy of the resurrection is tempered by the fact that we live in a good Friday world. The name of Derek Chauvin will not be easily erased from our memories because most of us witnessed the murder of George Floyd. We watched him for what we thought was eight minutes and 46 seconds lean down with his full body weight on the neck of another person. As Derek Chauvin's knee was in his neck, life was leaving his body. He gave those words, I can't breathe. He called for his mother who had already deceased. He had given up movement and yet that man stood there, or shall I say knelt there with the knee to the neck. The trial just started last week or two and what really galled me the most was the body cam footage which showed that he had been on George Floyd's neck, not eight minutes and 46 seconds, but nine minutes and 29 seconds. His humanity was totally disregarded. His humanity was pushed aside in the streets of these America. His humanity was not even seen, and the nation collectively wept. Yeah, I told you I got Easter hope, but I'm living in a Good Friday world. The family of Breonna Taylor settled their civil suit with the city, but at the same time, they had to settle it recognizing that her murderers will never be held accountable that a grand jury was only given one indictment to ponder over of reckless endangerment and shooting because a cop shot into the building not knowing what he was looking at or seeing. Yeah, I got Easter hope, but I'm living in a Good Friday world. I'm just a realist, if you will. We, we live in a Good Friday world, this world that, that has many sorrows attached to it. Uh, don't fool me now. Some of y'all had an opportunity to watch Judas and the Black Messiah. You know, that in 2021 film that came out about the betrayal of Fred Hampton. 
you, you know, the, Fred Hampton is interesting to us because Fred Hampton was betrayed by a Judas named William O'Neill who was an FBI informant against him. Yeah, but, but what makes Fred Hampton interesting is not that he was another civil rights la leader killed, but what he was trying to do. Because those in Chicago can tell the story best. As a person there leading the Black Panther Party in the city of Chicago, he did something extraordinary. He founded a rainbow coalition. He went and started pulling together folk who couldn't speak to each other. Folk, if you roll down their block with the wrong colors on, you could get killed by. But he began to draw them together in a multicultural political organization. He helped them to understand that it's not about race, it's about green. He helped them to understand that it's not about black and white, but it's about the haves and the have-nots. And if you are have-not, it doesn't matter what color you are, you in the have-not crowd. And the whole purpose of race is is to keep have-nots from looking to be those that have and keep folk arguing about petty stuff and territory that doesn't matter when the economics are being driven by the haves. Let me preach just a minute. Yeah, yeah, what Fred was trying to do was he pulled together Black Panthers, young patriots, young lords, made an alliance there in Chicago, in Chi-Town. But you can't make an alliance in Chi-Town and have people come together and not have people thinking that you just too militant. You see, J. Edgar Hoover, then the head of the FBI, saw the work of Hampton and he said, he looked at him and called him a black messiah. He said, that, that militant can't be there running things around. And so he deemed him as a great and grave threat to national security. And thus, a plan was put together to snuff his life out. Go and tell went together their plans. They went and knocked his life off of the face of the earth. At 21 years old, Fred Hampton was killed. The title of the movie is a play on words, Judas and the Black Messiah. Because like the Judas that betrayed Jesus, what Bill O'Neill did was similar. And yeah, the implications of somebody able to help others were there. Let, let me see if I can work this in a minute. See, while, while there are some uncanny similarities, there's a distinction that's undeniable. Watch this. You, you see, there's a 2,000 year gap, but, but yet the similarities are present. 2,000 year difference, but, but the similarities are present. Let, let, me, let, me, let me point out some of the similarities. I, I want to point out just a few. Bo both men lived in a time of government-sponsored oppression. Both men worked outside of the confines of their social groups. This is Jesus and Fred, if you don't mind. Both men sought to improve the quality of the lives of others. Both men were betrayed by confidants within their inner circle. I think you can see something there. Ultimately, both men were killed by order of government agents acting on behalf of a larger institution. I, now, now, now I, I, I still want to make some points here. I, I got to hurry, but let me see if I can walk this a little further into the deep. You, you, see, you see, ultimately, we have to recognize that they had some things in common. And some things that we ought to recognize, we ought to be doing as well. We can't do one thing, but the rest we all ought to be participating in if we really want to have hope in this Good Friday world. Because Easter hope should not be a one time of the year thing. 
Easter hope has to be an everyday, weekly thing because the Good Friday world remains a daily problem and the only way to break up the sorrow of Good Friday is the hope of a resurrection and a better day. And so we need some people to provide some hope. Let, let, let me let me let me see if I can work this. I'm gonna hurry up. I gotta rush because my time's almost up. Let me get me up here. Both men recognize that that if better days were to come on earth, three things would be required. If better days were to come on earth, three things would be required. The, the first thing that you're gonna have to have is commitment to the service of others. Commitment to the service of others. Uh, you, 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 see, you see, it's not good enough for you to serve your family, but you need to serve others. Uh, the song, A Charge to Keep, I Have, A God to Glorify, A Never Dying Soul to Save and Fitted for the Sky. The song says, to serve this present age that's past. My calling to prevail. Oh, may I and all my powers engage to do my master's will. It has to be in your heart to serve somebody else. And, and I want to tell you something. We witnessed the great blessing during this pandemic. The pandemic has revealed those who really care about serving others. It's, it's revealed character in ways that others didn't recognize. You see, we have seen this kind of service of others, this type of commitment every day in all of the frontline workers, in doctors and nurses and police and firefighters and military men and women, in grocery store clerks and truck drivers and food processors. You, we realize that this economy thrives from everywhere, from those with the most education to those with the least. If the truck driver pulls over, you don't get your toilet paper no matter how much they get to make. If the person working to put together a hand sanitizer stops working, you don't get to clean your hands without finding full soap and water. Everybody counts and their service is important. I just think. And, and Jesus had this crazy commitment to service. Y'all don't like his commitment because it ain't it ain't kind of thing y'all won't do. Y'all 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 too pretty. You some of y'all too hasa did it. Y'all got too much going on. You too good for it. Are you I know I know I know. See, because if you really care about folk and you really care about their welfare, uh, you don't mind washing their feet. Y'all got it. <laughs> You, you see, you see, that's why you get Tyrone called on you. Because I wanted you to rub my toes, but you'd rather play dominoes. Go, Tyrone. You don't, you don't you understand. When you take care of... Y'all not Erica Badu fans up in here. When you take care of somebody's feet, you're taking care of the intimate preciousness of their life that connects to their mind and their heart. What do you care about? What kind of service will you give if when you give the best of your service? I, they didn't think I was going there. I got to work this a little more. I just, uh, I feel like, I'm out of time, I'm out of time, but I gotta run, gotta run, gotta run. Yeah, but, but not only did they have a commitment to service, see, see uh, Jesus committed to service, and, and Fred was committed to service. You go back and read the 10 point plan of the Panthers. You, you get what I'm talking about. Cause see, folk got mad cause they were feeding folk. You, you, you think the hot lunch program is going on now because it wants it now. You, they, there were folk like the Panthers back in the day who realized it was hard to study in school all day if you haven't had anything to eat all night. And they began feeding. You meant you missed it. Went over your head. At some point, you've got to give more than you get. Come on back. I got to get this done. The second thing, the second thing was they had a compassion uh, for the sorrows of others. Compassion for the sorrows of others. You, you know, um, some folk right now have become totally heartless. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you've seen too much. You've been around too much that you become heartless. You, you looked at pain too many times that you become heartless. Uh, you, you, you've seen poverty so often you become heartless. Uh, Ronald Wilson Reagan rode through Washington, D.C. and said there was no homeless problem. I, I said to myself, either you can't see or you're just heartless. You, you, can't, you can't look outside and see somebody living under a bridge and think that that's the accommodation they've been looking to have all of their life. You can't look outside and see somebody trying to get food out of a garbage can and think that's the way they wanted to have dinner. You can't look out and see somebody in need of selling themselves in order to get resources and think that's the job they were dreaming about when they were in high school. You can't see somebody cutting themselves and putting drugs in their vein and trying to get high all the time thinking that that's the high they thought they would experience in life life can be hard on both life can be rough some people will be up and some people will be down sickness will come sorrow will come tragedy will come where is your compassion I, I, I'm, I'm preaching here. I, I, I feel this thing here. You see, you see, you see we've seen this type of, co of commitment to compassion in chaplains, in funeral directors, in mourners, in comforters. We, we've seen it. We, we have seen that kind of commitment. You, 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 at the peak of the coronavirus crisis, funeral directors has seen so much death, and that's all they work at, that many of them took to YouTube just a week. Many of them took to YouTube to tell their story of how many funerals they had done, of trying to figure out how to refrigerate bodies. And somebody was telling us it'd be gone in a couple of days, that it was like the flu, it was gonna go away. And here we are over a year later, not in full in-person worship. Oh, let me just preach. You got to have compassion for the sorrows of others. See, if you care about somebody other than yourself, then you won't mind helping somebody other than yourself. Okay, let me, let me, let me close, let me close. Number three, number three, number three. This is it, this is it. Because I got to get out of here, y'all know. Number three. They had courage to sacrifice for others. They had the courage to sacrifice for others. Now, now you, you got to know that if you live your life knowing that you're death eligible, that's one thing. But if you live your life knowing that somebody wants to kill you immediately, that's another thing. If you live your life knowing that people don't like you, that's one thing. But if you live your life with people telling you they don't like you, that's another thing. Y'all don't hear me. If you live your life knowing that you're under threat, that's one thing. But if you have to live your life with somebody needing to carry a gun, a knife, a switchblade, to put you to miss it, it's a whole nother. Let me see if I can make this clear. You see, we have seen people recently with the courage to make sacrifices for others. See, that's what those rallies were all about in the wake of George Floyd's death. Because see, those folk who hit the street had the commitment to take it to the street against social justice. The athletes who stood up, who postponed their work and took to their platform to stop play and demand change had to take 
courage to sacrifice, knowing that they could lose endorsements by saying something, knowing they could lose money by saying something. See, it means nothing if you don't have any skin in the game. But when you got to put your skin in the game, then the sacrifice takes courage. As long as you can do it from a long handle smooth, as long as you can do it from a distance, it doesn't matter. But when you got to get skin in the game, when you got to walk down the street and somebody has the hose out ready to put it on you and the smoke out ready to smoke you out and the rubber bullets out ready to shoot at you and the grenade out ready to cascade over your head then you know um, I, I, I love Stacey Abrams because Stacey Abrams shows us what real courage is like see, see we, we saw the courage to sacrifice in Stacey Abrams. Because when, when she committed herself, mind, body, and spirit to change Georgia and help send an African-American pastor and a Jewish brother to the United States Senate from the great state of Georgia, you missed it, went over your head. She had the courage to sacrifice what it takes to make change. I got to get out of here. I'm over time. I got red numbers up on the screen. So I got to go, y'all. But before I close, before I leave you here, I done took you down a primrose path that needs some clarification. So let me just say, this nation has seen the assassination of those who wanted to change the status quo. So, so, so Fred Hampton's death joined a line that most of you didn't realize he was in. Uh, you, you knew some of the other folk who had been assassinated in this country who sought to make changes, but you probably just didn't know Fred's name, and all of whom had the characteristics that I just named. You, you know the name of Abraham Lincoln because once Lincoln helped to free the slaves in the proclamation, Emancipation Proclamation, you, you know his name. They, they shot him in the balcony. They, they, they shot him while he was sitting there watching the theater. You, 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 you know his name. You know Martin Luther King Jr. because they shot him on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel. You know John F. Kennedy because they shot him on the street of Texas. You know Malcolm X because they shot him in the ballroom in New York City. Now you know the name of Fred Hampton because they killed him in his bed with his pregnant friend right by his side do oh, you know their names all of those assassinations were real and all of them were assassinated because of their beliefs in what society could look like as being more just and more peaceful but Jesus has a distinction I wish I could preach right here Jesus has a distinction that makes the difference over all of them you see all of them died and stayed dead but Jesus died and he rose again uh, y'all don't hear me in here hallelujah for the resurrection this Sunday we celebrate the one who's a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. This Sunday we celebrate he who was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we've been made healed. This Sunday we celebrate the one who died on Good Friday but got up early Sunday morning. I thought I would tell you here, he is Lord. Oh, y'all ain't with me just yet. He is Lord. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus. Y'all ain't helping me up in here. Look at somebody real quick and just wave at them and just acknowledge with them that I know he's Lord. I know he's Lord. I know he's Lord. He lives. I gotta stop. I, I got more in my preaching here, but I gotta stop. But I wanna just tell you one last thing. 
you, and, and you, if you don't get nothing else I say you, I want to tell you one last thing. I got to stop right now, but I got one last thing that I need to tell you. Because Jesus modeled something for us because he was committed to serving others. And he was compassionate about the sorrows of others. The Bible says that he was a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And then I learned uh, he was courageous uh, in sacrificing his life uh, for other people. Uh, but I got one more thing. Uh, Y'all ain't hear me. Uh, I got one more thing. Uh, I got to tell you. Uh, I got one more thing. Uh, he was chosen uh, as the Savior of others. Uh, Goodbye now, y'all. Uh, he is uh, my, 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 my savior. Yes, he is. Uh, he is uh, my, 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 my savior. My God, uh, he got us. He got a help. Yeah. I got to stop y'all. I'm way over time. I got to stop y'all. I'm way over time. I, I got to stop y'all. I'm way over time. But I dare you to praise him uh, if he's your savior. I dare you to praise him uh, if you know him. Uh, I dare you to praise him uh, if you love him. Uh, I dare you to praise him. Uh, I, I, uh, I, uh, I dare you. I wish you just put your hands together. And bless God in here. I wish you just bless God. Just, just clap in here and clap in your home. I had to cut my sermon, but the way the way we get to have Easter hope in a Good Friday world is to know we got a Savior that'll help us so that we can love upon others enough to make the world better for them. That we'll care enough to make the world better for them as we represent him in the earth realm. I don't have time. Maybe there's somebody online, maybe there's somebody in the sanctuary who's looking to meet and connect with Jesus. I want to offer you that opportunity right now. I want to offer you that opportunity. I want to offer you that opportunity. The Bible says the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. If you feel connected to Jesus and you want to give your life to him, if you want to join the fellowship, I, I, I want to receive you right now into our family. I want to show you love. I want to receive you. And if you're online and you want to connect with us, you see the way to do it online. Email us, call us, text us, write us right now. If you call us, we'll call you. This is the hour to receive your blessing. We want you to know that God loves you. And we love you. Hallelujah. 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 I'm, I'm trying to stop by somebody pulling on me. 
I'm trying to stop, but somebody, that's it. All to Jesus I surrender. I surrender all. There's something about giving up your life to God that'll make you brand new. As you are taking a moment to close your eyes and you're making a decision about the Lord, will have a basket in the back just drop it in the basket we're not going to do anything formal no walking around none of that let, let, I just want to pray over the offering real quick Father we bless you now for gifts and givers thank you for right now touching the people to be givers God so that they can be participants in every divine blessing and in every good work in Jesus name restore to them hundredfold for your glory Amen and amen. Now, if you notice, I don't beg, don't ask so much a bunch of times. I just say, you know what you're supposed to do. You do what you're supposed to do. Amen. Now, I'm going to get out of here.